Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, it's nice to see you again. If this is the first time you're visiting me, thank you so much. I appreciate you for taking the time to consider to visit me. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you and I appreciate you for always trusting and uh, returning back to me. All right, it's nice to see you, your beautiful face, wherever you're listening from. Thank you. If this is the first time, I encourage you to click the subscribe button, like and share, tell your friends about I Need Scrum Master. If you are looking for a place to uh, enroll in Scrum course, uh, visit www.ineedscrummaster.com and then we'll be able to help you out. All right. So the last video I made, I talking about some techniques or some key highlights you should have in mind in order to facilitate scrum meetings, scrum sections, scrum ceremonies. Today, uh, this is like an opportunity to help professional scrum masters and even those aspiring to become scrum masters or even teams that are struggling on how to become self-organized. In my own experience as a scrum master, one thing I really... Um, I would say that most teams struggle is how to contain as a team, how to contain and work together as a team. In other words, how can a scrum team come together, team formation, right? And it's not necessary to work as a team. It is we as against I. So in order for us to uh, go ahead today, I will be walking us through, giving some analysis, explanation on Dr. Bruce Toxman's four studies of team development, how a Scrum Master can be able to um, help form team or how a Scrum Master can be able to help a struggling team to become high performing. Okay, so with that said, I am going to pull up my uh, board and then we can get started. <clears throat> All right, so as you can see, um, there are four stages of team development. This is a technique that every Scrum Master could adopt or every team could adopt, but it requires an excellent Scrum Master to help the team do that or an agile coach to help the team to become high performing. There are basically four stages of team development or team formation, right? Um, and understanding about each of them would help the team to know where they are considering the situation. All right, so this diagram is an illustration about how Dr. Bruce Toxman's research has had a lot of influence in Scrum or in an agile environment. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to walk us through of giving some highlights information about Dr. Bruce Toxman's little bio and how his research in psychology has really engineered or has contributed in team formation. We're going to come back to this slide, but for now, I just thought I could just, you know, share this with you so that you understand that there are basically four stages of team development, even though there is a fifth one, right? That fifth one is not so much pronounced, but in part because in Scrum, there is this work on the products rather than on service, right? So most of the times the team, even though some team members after working on a particular project, you know, will disengage and then come back again or can be able to work on different projects. But most of the times you hear about the four stages of team development. You have the forming stage, you have the storming phase, you have the numbing phase, you have the performance performing phase. Um, just a little brief information about each of them, right? In the, form, in the first stage, there is this high level that the Scrum Master should be very close to the team because the team needs these close guidance. They're just coming together. They don't understand what it means to work as a team, what it means especially to work in an agile environment, right? So it requires a professional and an experienced Scrum Master to give them that guidance they will need, both in theory and in practical. The storming phase um, there are some discussion among team members, challenge on how they could work on themselves, on how they could work together as a team, right? 
In the numbing phase, they start building relationship among each other, trusting each other. Remember, trust is a key thing there. They begin to understand, okay, if Mr. A has 10 years experience as a software developer, and he has been working in, you know, using Angular, right? How about he trusts me that I am very much an expert in working perhaps in PHP. These are, you know, software languages, right? And then in performance stage, the team um, requires little or no guidance. They can really deliver, um, increment each iteration, and they can always meet their spring goal. This is just a high level overview explanation on um, this um, false edit of team development. You know, moving forward, I'm gonna go dive into detail about that formation. <clears throat> All right, again, um, I'll need to point out here that there are be there are lots of techniques, there are really lots of techniques um, a Scrum Master could use in forming team or a Scrum Master could use in team formation, right? But today, I'll basically be, you know, walking us through on these four studies. Perhaps in another of these videos, I'll be able to also walk us through on the other techniques a Scrum Master could use in team formation. Who is Bruce Tuckman? Well, if you go to Google and type Bruce Tuckman, the first thing I believe you will be able to see is for studies of team development, Bruce Tuckman. These, I mean, um, Things are very much popular or very much common associated with these American psychologists. So Bruce Tuckman is an American psychologist. Um, in fact, he's a researcher into group dynamics. He wanted to understand how a group of people can work together as a team. He is known for a number of researches, right? Um, what really brings out Bruce Tuckman to the front line is his research paper titled developmental sequence in small groups. He published this paper in 1965. And the purpose of this paper um, was discussion centered on team performance. He wanted to understand how people can be able to perform together and as against individual basis. I mean, Toxman, his idea has been popularly called Toxman studies of group development. So if you go to Google and search Toxman studies of group development or four studies of team development, you'll be able to have that information. Um, again, like I said, uh, the four major studies are the forming stage, the storming phase, the norming phase, and the performing phase. But there is a fifth stage that Toxman mentioned in that paper talk called adjoining or morning stage. These two are not very common in Scrum, but what that means is <clears throat> at the end of the Scrum, at the end of, let's say the Scrum team has finished working on a particular project. Some team members might be pulled away to be to work on another project. In other words, they are adjoining, uh, you know, they are disengaging as a team for that particular project. Apart from these development sequence in small groups, Tuxman is again known are uh, popular for his research on students' procrastination, known as Toxman Procrastination Scale. So you can go to Google and type that, and then that information will pop up for you. But for today, we're not talking about Toxman Procrastination Scale. And um, this is a good information for students who are really struggling on how they can combat procrastination. Not just students, but also people who wants to really, really get rid of procrastination. Check it out. But today, let's focus. Pay attention to the four studies of team development. All right, so the first we're going to take a look at is the forming stage, which is the first stage, right? When companies or departments are trying to become agile, particularly Scrum, when they are putting team members together, in other words, they are coming, they are forming together. The first stage is really a very critical moment. It is at the point where team members are uncertain. They are not sure about what they are going to work on. They are not sure about the product goal. So in order to emphasize product goal, if you 
when, I mean, I've mentioned about that before, but for the sake of emphasis, there is what is called product backlog. And the items in the product backlog are called product backlog items, PBIs. So when team members are coming together to work as a team, they need to understand the goal of the product. They need to understand what is the main purpose they are being called together to work as a team, right? So there's this idea of individual goals that are unclear, they are still dangling around, right? The process to work on that product is not what is not well established. That is when they become, that is when teams or even companies um, begins to do Scrum rather than be Scrum or do Agile as against being Agile. I mean, I've made a video about being Agile and doing Agile, right? One is borrowing some Scrum practices or Scrum or Agile practices in order to work on a project. Why the being Scrum or being Agile is about leaving that mindset. So because process is not well established, right? This, this is the state where team members don't really understand the process. And in order to help the team, there is a tool. What I mean by tools are, you know, in other words, things that can help the Scrum Master or whoever that is in charge. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't say in charge, but whoever that is helping to form the team to guide them. The first is the product backlog. The product backlog contains the product goal. Right, the product goal is what is helping to shape the mindset, what is helping the team to work together as a team, right? Self-organization, in other words, the team needs to understand that they are self-organized. In other words, they determine the what, they determine the how to work on the product, right? Definition of done, right? The definition of done is they need to understand the checklist of things that needs to be done in order to be able to produce an increment. It is at this point that the team can be able to start putting things together of what will bind them together, which is called the team agreement. Now, moving from the forming stage, it goes to the second stage called the storming phase. The storming phase is a stage where you have a lot of conflicts, right? Some, mis some miscommunications. It is the time when the team members begins to, I mean, I would say attack each other, there is some kind of misunderstanding there that would exist. So sometimes, I mean, if you're a scrum master, you must have encountered um, team members that uh, either uh, miscommunicating because of, you know, lack of or choice of words or because of this idea of I am a senior person on the team or I'm a junior person on the team or some team members might be distributed Why some team members might be on the site. Different reasons can can contribute towards this conflict, right? So these team are trying to understand the best approach, the best process, right? They push the boundaries on the team agreement. It requires a scrum master to understand the state that the team is. I mean, I've had experience where some of my team members have miscommunicated. I mean, that really shows the state they are. In the forming stage, they might not really start having that miscommunication because they're just coming together. But the storming time, the storming phase is an opportunity for the Scrum Master to really understand, okay, this is where they are. This is what I need to do in order to help them to be able to scale through. Right? The team purpose is unclear. The relationship is still blurry. They are not really sure if they should trust each other. They are still on the verge where what direction they should go. And how would a Scrum Master or what would a Scrum Master do to be able to glue them together, you know, to be able to get them to get through that storming phase? Now, that brings us to the tools. The Scrum Master needs to remind or should bring to the front line about the Scrum values. It's an opportunity for the Scrum Master or the Agile coach to begin to remind the Scrum team about commitment, focus, respect, openness, and courage. They need to respect each other. They need to be open. Another opportunity is the use of the sprint retrospective. We understand that the sprint retrospective is the last of the Scrum ceremony. It is an opportunity for the Scrum team to be able to reflect, not on the product, but on the process, on the team members, or on the tools. So, it's an opportunity for them to be able to ask, on them, to ask themselves some critical and important question. How have they 
fed during the scrum or during the sprint. Again, the team agreement is an opportunity that the scrum master or the agile coach to be able to look at and see what they should be able to bring in more or what they should be able to chisel out. Again, looking at the definition of done, that would help the team to know if really they are meeting their increment. The third stage is the norming phase. The norming phase is, I mean, they're always getting close to that understanding phase where they can trust each other, trust each other, right? At this stage, the relationship is well understood, right? They, they, they are gluing together really, really fast. They are gluing together really, really well, right? The team, com the team commits to the product and the sprint goal, right? I mentioned about that just a few minutes ago, about the product goal. The sprint goal, sprint. Okay, so after the sprint planning, the team will have what is called the sprint goal. The sprint goal is what summarizes what, is, what the team is going to work on for that particular sprint. This is an opportunity for the scrum team to really know that whatever they do, on a day-to-day -day basis is gearing towards, it's an opportunity for them to inspect and adapt towards the spring goal. Now, this is an opportunity for the team to be able to scale through or moving forward on how to become performing. In other words, they are trying to really, really figure out uh, how to glue together, to cement themselves in order to trust each other. And the tool the Scrum Master or the Scrum Team could use is Scrum Events. We understand that there are five scrum events. You have the sprint planning, you have the sprint itself, you have the daily stand-up, you have the sprint review, you have the sprint retrospectives. Sprint retrospective. Now in Scrum, there are three scrum accountabilities, which is also called the three scrum rules. You have the product owner who is also identified as the PO, you have the scrum master, and you have the developers, also called the development team. You have the artifacts, and there are three artifacts, right? You have the product backlog, you have the sprint backlog, and you have the increments. So these are the tools that the Scrum Master or the Agile Code will be able to use in order to get the team from the norming phase to the last phase, which is called the performing phase. If you have been, you, I mean, if you have been on an airplane before, there is a time where the, the, the airplane will go into the cruise moment right, where, I mean, everything will be moving so smoothly. And I think it does happen when you are driving. There is, there is this, this cruise control, right, in most cars nowadays, where you just, you know, the car most of the times performs its own function without much input or little input from the driver or from the pilot, right? This is an opportunity for the team to become high-performing, Right, they always deliver. They need little or no guidance. But what I would say is, it doesn't mean that the team wouldn't need a scrum master. That's not the end point, end purpose of it. No, every team member or every team requires or need a scrum master. A scrum master need to keep them to become high performing because most of the times, I've heard it. I've listened to that. Some team think that when they become high performing, they don't need a scrum master or an agile coach anymore. That's not true. If a scrum team becomes or is high performing and then you don't have a scrum master, it is the chances are high that they might go back or they might, you know, deflect from that high performing to another stage. I'm not sure what stage they might fall into, but it is very, very risky to uh, not have a team without a scrum master or an agile coach. Imagine a football or soccer team without a coach. Teams like um, Barcelona team, I'm not, I mean, I'm not advertising any team right now, but I'm just trying to draw your attention to what I mean by high performing. Teams that are very popular, either Chelsea or you know, Manchester United, every team, no matter their status, or every football or soccer team from each country requires a coach. That translates to even scrum team. Even if you are high performing, you need a scrum master or an agile coach. However, at this stage, right, the team is becoming more strategic. They can always become innovative. They can come up with ideas in order to be able to deliver increments. They trust each other. And they can always have a very smooth conversation among each other.
Now, the tools to keep the team in check are the scrum events. Definitely during the daily standard, for example, I mean, they all understand how it, what it means to, or how to run a scrum, a daily scrum. They know how to demo during the sprint retrospective. They know how to have a conversation, constructive conversation during the sprint retrospective. They understand each individual roles. Uh, they understand the responsibilities of the product owner, the responsibility of the Scrum Master, and what it means to be a developer or a development team. They understand the, the Scrum artifacts. Now, they understand what it means to forecast, right? They understand what it means to use the metrics, the KPI, in order to measure their progress. So, these are the four stages of the team development. Uh, I think every Scrum Master needs to understand that, not just in theory, but also in practice. Every Agile coach needs to understand these four stages. The final stage, or the last stage, which is the adjoining stage, which I mentioned, is when team members are working as a contract on a contract basis, at the end of that project, they might disengage. In other words, the contract has ended, so they all take their leave. So that is what we have as the adjoining or the morning stage, right? Okay, that's all I have for today. If you think this is meaningful, please click the like button. If you have any question, put your question in the comment section. Um, for continuous updates on my posts, I would encourage you to subscribe and, and click the notification button so that you can always know when I release new contents and you can always uh, follow through. Again, if you are new to Scrum or you have heard about Scrum or your company have been thinking about Scrum, I mean, feel free to reach out to iNeedScrumMaster.com. You can always email at info at iNeedScrumMaster.com and someone will respond to you. If you, I mean, feel free to refer your friends, colleagues who have been interested in the Scrum class. Uh, there is an ongoing Scrum class right now for six weeks. Um, you can, it's very flexible. You will meet with a Scrum Master, certified and professional Scrum Master, um, who will be able to walk you through, guide you, support you, give you the necessary information, not just in theory, but also in practice. Uh, what we do is we try to apply Scrum. In other words, Scrum applied, demonstrating Scrum using all of the tools, environments, different domain knowledge. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Um, Thank you always. I'm so grateful for always considering me. Um, if you like what I do, click the like button, subscribe, share, tell your friends. That's where we're going to stop for today. Otherwise, I will see you again next time. In the meantime, thank you and bye for now.